Hey Guru Nation, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you like this video if you do. For every one of you in the clinical research industry or those of you aspiring to be in the clinical research industry, this is how it works. You can find me anywhere, okay? Social networks, email, phone, all the links are underneath. Today... I got a question from someone watching uh, or interacting with me on Snapchat, all right? But for you, it could be anywhere. Instagram, Snapchat, those are big for me. Uh, but you can call or text me, 949-415-6256, email dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com, or all, maybe some of the more traditional social networks, some of the more old school ones like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. I'm on those as well. So you ask questions, I'll try to answer it. Again, it's just one person's opinion. You shouldn't base any decision making on just one person on YouTube's answers to your questions. But I understand <laughs> that there's a lack of information out there, and I hope to be able to provide you some value. So today is for the aspiring CRAs, the aspiring clinical research associates. And this person asked me on Snapchat, hey, I'd like for you to talk about writing reports after monitor visit. Uh, what do you write down? How do you organize it? Uh, if there was something wrong with the site, how do you mention it? Please talk thoroughly about writing reports as a CRA in general. So for the most part, yes, the reports need to be very detailed. All right. One of my lead CRAs right now, actually, because I have a part-time contract CRA position, one of my lead CRAs urges that the reports, especially the site selection visit reports, be as detailed as possible. Luckily, most CROs or sponsors that you work for will have their own templates for what it is that you need to include in your reports. Now, these are not, I want you to understand, these are not just things that you can check boxes and then submit your report. Like, you have to tell a story. So, for example, at a site selection visit, you and, and it's helpful to actually have this report with you while you're doing the site selection visit or the site initiation visit or the mo regular monitoring visit or the closeout visit uh, or the pre-audit visit, which is really just an extra more thorough monitoring visit. Uh, it's helpful for you to have the report, either have it on your laptop and carry your laptop around with you or do what I do and print it out and then just handwrite on it. Um, and then when you're done with the site visit, go home and type it up, okay? So site selection visit is the by far the most detailed uh, report that you're going to write as a CRA, okay? Um, it took me three hours, took me four hours to write my last site selection visit report, trip report, or sometimes they're called annotated trip reports, or sometimes they're just called reports, all right? Every CRO, every sponsor titles them different. They all have different templates, but in general, they all function to accomplish the same thing, which is to document what the status is of that site. So for a site selection visit, for example, it takes you through, obviously, the admin stuff like address, phone number, main contacts. And then it goes through PI oversight, PI experience, uh, staff experience, staff training, GCP training. Then it gets into the facilities. Is there a calibration log? Is uh, Then it gets into the um, investigational product storage. Where is it stored? Is it temperature controlled? When was the last time they were calibrated? Uh, is there a log? So each section on your report, and your report will be like probably 10 pages. Mine was 12 pages when I was finished with it. Uh, you're going to have detailed instructions for things that you should focus on. And then if there's something that's not on that form, but that stands out. So let's say you went to the site and they had a CLIA waiver, but they needed a CLIA certificate. Uh, you would write that in your report, right? I visited the site. Uh, they're in the process of getting their CLIA certificate. They now just have a CLIA waiver. So that's one of my action items. Uh, and then at the end of your site selection visit report, you check a box whether you, as the CRA, would recommend this site to participate in the study or not. Okay, so the templates are really good. Like if you had to come up with all this from scratch, first of all, there would be a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of trip reports that would be all over the place um, from CRA to CRA because some are more organized than others. Some uh, conduct their site selection visits in a different order than others. Um, but what I do is I just make sure I have that paper in front of me and then I actually go through everything I need to go through and then if I'm missing anything I'll pull the coordinator aside usually it's the city coordinator you're gonna be talking to and ask them those questions just just read from the form say hey um, can you explain uh, who is in charge of the investigational product at your site who is in charge of archiving records do you have a name so the more specific the better so that you can have a very detailed trip reports and not have just generic trip reports. So the FDA can actually audit these. All right, this is part of the monitoring plan. They get they get submitted. Your report will get submitted to the trial master file, and the sponsor will get it, and then the FDA can audit it. So the more detailed, the better, and uh, you want it to be detailed because you want to show the sponsor or the FDA that you're actually doing your job as a monitor okay same thing with site initiation visit same thing with a uh, closeout visit same thing with interim monitoring visit you would write action items so let's say you go for an interim monitoring visit which is a regular monitoring visit and uh, the site needs to reconsent two subjects well those would be action items okay and they might even be protocol deviations but you can you can list that in the action item um, action item is good for the report now the site never sees the report okay the sponsor your your lead CRA will see it the project manager will see it uh, the sponsor will see it and maybe the FDA will see it but the site never sees it what the site will see and this is where you put the action items on for the site is the confirmation letters and the follow-up letters uh, for every for every one of your monitoring visits so prior to your visit preferably a week before you would send out a confirmation letter which would state and you have templates for these two it would state exactly when you're coming what time who you're gonna meet with what the agenda is what you're gonna be looking at how much of the PI's time you need etc right now the follow-up letter same thing you have a template but you write specifically what occurred at that uh, site visit what the site needs to do what action items are there uh, what pending issues are there and uh, yeah but don't worry you have templates for all this stuff okay so hopefully that helps um, I wish I could show you one but I'd be breaking all kinds of confidentiality disclosure agreements um, but they're all pretty much the same, okay? If you need more help, let me know, and I'll try to do another video. Thank you very much for watching. Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Bye-bye.